So the, we're, we're essentially building a decentralized platform to let people, I mean, first and foremost, we've uh, created a new system for self-custody because we looked at this and we said, okay, people don't want to self-custody their own assets. They don't like dealing with keys. They don't like the responsibility of here's 24 words and don't let anybody else see them. And if you lose them, you lose all your money. If anyone else gets them, they take all your money. I mean, that's kind of ridiculous when you think about it, right? Uh, or you have to hand your assets to a centralized custodian and hope they don't screw you. That's essentially the crypto choice right now. And, uh, and we thought, okay, like if Apple, you know, Steve Jobs said to his guys, go build a better crypto self-custody system, what would they do, right? What would Apple do if you approached a problem like this? They sure as heck wouldn't have what looks like state-of-the-art wallets that are out there right now. Um, and actually Apple did kind of approach this problem a little bit uh, with the secure enclave, this hardware chip they have on all their phones now. Actually, it was really interesting. They put that on there, essentially a, a, a secure tamper-proof hardware security device for, it was more or less for face ID and biometrics, but you can also use it for crypto keys and, uh, you know, keychain stuff. And then the FBI came to them and said, hey, Apple, uh, we need to be, have a backdoor in here in case of terrorism or money laundering. And Apple's like, nope, we're not gonna let you in where this is this it was quite a stance they took uh in retrospect so anyway we approached that we said how do we build a custody self-custody system that's really powerful and really easy to use and we came up with this thing called magic keys which is a key that can be uh created without all these 24 words and seed phrases and all that and then uses multi-party cryptography and sharding and shard encoding and backups so that if you lose your phone, uh, you can get them back. And then it uses a concept called uh, social guardians, which is something that uh, Vitalik has been pushing for years to protect the key restoration process. So, um, so it all boils down to this thing called the magic key. And we spent months actually really focused on building that. Uh, it's actually, we're, um, we're filing a patent because it is unique, we, we feel. And, uh, and the patent attorney, Turned out his brother was a venture capitalist and he's like, hey, can I invest in this thing too? And so he and his brother came in. <laughs> you got the right uh, lawyer for once. Yeah, he's, he's a great, <laughs> yeah, no, he's a great lawyer. He's, he's great. Yeah, so so we started with this Magic Keys and then on top of that, we're building a best price execution engine that that looks across all the DeFi, um, uh, you know, the, the decentralized exchanges for the best price and liquidity. Um, so Sounds we, familiar. So would you... Go on a limb and call it a decentralized Voyager. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's definitely parts that overlap in terms of best price execution, um, rapid aggregating price and ag aggregating right, and the aggregation. Yep. Yield. So there's a yield service in there, but the difference is the yield is all from this vault. So we call it a vault. It's your personal vault. There's no other funds commingled. No one controls it. We will never take possession of keys, coins, and we'll never offer any protocols. It's completely a software platform that's under the user's control and they make all decisions at all times. So, uh, and, and it's got a really easy to use UI on top of it. So we're trying to take this advanced MPC key technology and, you know, just enterprise grade, you know, fireblocks type, type, you know, technology and make it available to everybody in the planet. Anybody in the world can get their own magic key for free uh, if they want to self-custody their own assets.